you have to excuse all the uh, the steam here at the moment. I've uh, I got the tarp, the Lomo three by three meter tarp set up uh, like a tent tonight, and I've got the Highlander gas stove going in here at the moment. You might just be able to see it there. Um, the reason I've only got the the two through night lights tonight is where is it? There it is, little bastard behind me. The screw fix work light decided to die on me. Silly me, forgot to charge it up. I think that's a habit forming this camp because I forgot to charge this phone up as well and the battery pack, portable battery pack. So I'm going to see how much battery I've got on a uh, on a uh, on all this stuff. So it might be a short video. We'll soon see. So yeah, I've got some uh, super noodles boiling there, chicken. Sainsbury's uh, ones there. Uh, I've got some uh, soup, some chunky veg soup. I haven't had dinner yet, so I'm absolutely starving. I'm gonna have a big feast in here. Uh, I've got some last of the mashed potatoes, a couple of uh, mug shots, protein brownies, uh, snore and peace tea, hot chocolate. Uh, yes, I've got a cider, I'll be doing that later. I've got two and a half litres of water with me. Then over the back here, I'm just gonna, sorry, hang on, just gonna see it, turn the stove off. We've got, oh, turning round, loads of space under here. 800 gram tarp, and you could fit two, three people in it, so I've got loads of space. Then for the morning, I've got some porridge, Sainsbury's original flavour porridge, some honey to go with it, uh, another hot chocolate, a Nature Valley energy cereal bar thingamajig, uh, another titanium sport there. I haven't bothered weighing this kit yet. I've got the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60 litre of rucksack, so that should indicate to you that pack weight tonight is of no real concern to me. Some of it's ultra light gear, but to be honest, yeah, I just threw it all together and was like, I'm just going to sort of have a, a semi luxurious camp. Uh, waterproof over trousers on top of the pack, just put a black bag down under uh, the rucksack just if the ground gets damp, and I'll put rubbish in that. We've got some of this poly cryo ground top. This, this yellow thing, that's a new thing actually. I'll just quickly show you this. There's my shoes. Some extra clothes, like hat, gloves, uh, neck uh, scarf in case it gets cold. Yeah, uh, skeleton frame pad, climate, inertia, x light. There we go. This is my Terra Nova, and it's a uh, laser sleeping mat. It's like really, really thin foam, full length though, and a uh, I think I paid £25 for it, brand spanking new. Comes rolled up in a little bag. I thought, do away with that. I'm just going to fold it into sections and use it as the support, the back for my frameless packs. So, ultra light bit of kit. Luxurious sleeping pillow, thermo rest, uh, stuff sack pillow with all the stuff sacks in, down sleeping bag, silk sleeping bag liner and the outkit hunker bivy bag try off the camera there which is broken oh turn you around i got my knife here we go <laughs> my waterproof sealskin socks on right. shout out to lee from burton outdoors all right mate i finally got around to giving you the shout out and i kept forgetting a few times uh, this guy's got a great channel, Burton Outdoors. I think he's just started uh, started it up. So give him some support, guys, and check his stuff out. It's pretty cool. Right, it's time for another cider time. So tonight's cider is a Stella Artois Sidra, not cider, as the advert says. It's pear flavoured with apple. And uh yeah, it's uh oh it's four point five percent alcoholic volume. Right, 
and I think I don't know I don't think I got this one cheap I think I it didn't cost me a lot anyway but I think I've tried it once before I can't really remember so let's crack this bad boy open it's gonna go with my dinner just right hmm <clears throat> so yeah cheers guys Oh, as different to any pear cider I've had before. It's um, I don't know. It's it's not a sweet. It almost actually does taste kind of like they've mixed a little bit of Stella in it as well. Um, so it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a definitely a different taste in cider. Hmm. I quite like that. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not really fizzy. Hmm. It's good though. I would give that. I want to give that an eight out of ten. Hmm. It's good cider, yeah. Okay, so Stella Artois. Pear cider, I give you 8 out of 10. Not bad, recommend that one. Cheers. Alright, guys, I'm, uh, I've had my cider and I'm just finishing off the last of my food. I'm going to do myself uh, probably my snore and peace tea, probably have a hot chocolate as well. I've got plenty of water, so. And yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you tarp and the setup and everything and the sort of the outside in the morning okay so I just want to eat and yeah get some sleep really so yeah as soon as it's light in the morning I'll be up and I'll show you the setup then okay so see you in the morning see you later good morning guys it's 7 a.m. and it's breakfast time stoves on got light about or oh, must have been about half six I think and it it just stayed really murky and there was no like sunrise or anything a bit of red sky and then that was it really so it was a uh, yeah it wasn't the, the nicest start to the morning but slept uh, really well kept me warm this climate inertia mat though his skeleton frame pad here don't buy one okay they're overpriced they're about 50 55 pound and yeah sure they're like the lightest self-inflating mat in the world but they also self deflate I've had to wake up twice in the night and pump this back up with the little hand pump and it still deflates so I might have to get in touch with with them about that because that can't be right surely um, but other than that I slept really well really warm um, the only annoying thing was some pheasants making a load of noise outside the outside the tarp um, I can just hear a woodpecker at the moment so I'm just going to wait for this to boil and then I'll show you outside the tarp and you know the exact setup I had and how I, roughly how I did it as well. So this was home for last night. It's my uh, Lomo 3x3 three three meter tarp. I haven't used it in a while mainly due to the fact that uh, I keep buying bloody tents <laughs> and uh, yeah I uh, yeah, le left this one on the shelf for a bit but it's nice to nice to crack it back out again I think this tarp cost me about 35 40 pound tops whoa that was some deadfall just there that just fell out of the tree some big old bits there I'm glad I wasn't under that 
wow, I might go and have a look at that in a second. Um, yeah, you know, it's a brand new tarp and come with four guy lines and four stakes, like just basic sort of stainless steel stakes. I've added stakes to it, of course, because you want a few more than four. So this setup is the enclosed stent, enclosed tent style tarp. And what I've done is I laid it out flat, ridge line down the centre. I guide out one corner, sorry, pegged out. It's too early for me. <laughs> I pegged out one corner, pegged out another corner, pegged out the middle back one. Then I've got come round here, just waiting for breakfast to cool down and whatnot. Then I've got the two front ends, bought them out, pegged them apart to make the doorway, and then I've got one of the trekking poles and I slotted it, not under, of course, that's the, the front edge, I slotted it under the next guy loop, it's reinforced area there. Stood the pole up inside, there we go, you can see under there, yeah? Okay, so that's giving you your height and your, your sort of shape straight away. And then what you do with these, these ones here, you, you pull those back and I just guide them out to, to the middle uh, stakes there, peg them down. Same with, oh, same with that side again as well, yeah? So that gives you your door, pulls them back. And then, it, and then you pull your guy out, that middle one at the front edge here, guide it out and that gives it like a beak, yeah, just to shed rain and stuff uh, from coming in the doorway. I mean, it's a really, really clever little uh, tarp design. You see this, this set up a lot on YouTube and stuff and I've never used it before. I've only ever used it when I was practicing in the garden setting up the uh setting up the tarp and it looks so complicated and I thought there's no way I'm gonna be able to do that, you know, that I'm the worst person with setting up tarps and stuff. I think I just make up my own rules, I make up my own knots. Um I have actually bought like a set of knot cards which are basically like how to instructional cards, very small cards, about the size of a credit card, and you can like clip them on your keychain and stuff. And I'm they just go through like basic knots and stuff. So I'm gonna start trying to teach myself knots. We'll see how that goes. Um but yeah, this one actually worked out quite well and I followed and I've mentioned it before in the practice setup videos of the tarp. I followed a guy called Silver Wolf. I think he's called Dan. He's based in England. And he had a 3 by 3 meter tarp. And he, sh he went through loads of different configurations, including this one. And I don't know why, but his videos just made sense. And it just clicked with me. And I just got it. And I was like, right. And I just sort of watched the video and just you know did it step by step as he was setting it up and it, it just worked so yeah so that's all the front sorted out and then what I did was because I pegged out the corners here and here I then got inside and I got my other trekking pole at a shorter length and I pushed it up against that reinforced loop so once again one it one in from the edge yeah and then stuck it at an angle and pushed up the back to give me some extra room at the back there. Of course, the only downside with this configuration is you've then got inside, ah, you've got two poles in the way, yeah, of your sleeping area. So you have to sort of angle your sleeping and bedding area between that, but it still gives you tons and tons of space in there. Full rain cover, you're out of the wind, it's somewhat warmer in there as well. I can cook in there because it's well ventilated. I had no problems with uh, with gas build up in there and I was using the fast boil all night. You know, I cooked several dinners because I was starving on it. So yeah, you know, it's a 
you know, and all the steam and stuff coming off of it just escaped out the door. So, yeah, it worked really well. So this was one of the more successful tarp uh, setups I've done. The only thing I regret is that it didn't rain last night because it would have been nice to be under that in the rain and to see what it's like, see how well it would hold out, and I it just it would have would have added to it, but still it was a really good good little camp. Um, apart from that, with the setup, then I just went round and just guide out each opposite ends of the remaining guy loops just to completely peg it down just in case you know a salami come along <laughs> anyway so uh yeah here's the forest right let's go and have a look at this deadfall that's uh fallen down See all the rabbit holes and stuff. Spring is truly here. That's my other usual bivy spot. I think I better be careful in case some more of it comes down. I think it came down around here. I think it was around here I saw it. It was weird because I swear I think I heard a few bits coming down last night. I think at one point the wind might have picked up and uh, it was somewhere over here I could hear something, loads of like wood cracking and stuff like that and I thought there was someone out here so I had my knife ready <laughs> I think it might have just been like animals just moving about but I don't know, they was making a lot of noise if they were, it must have been a bloody big animal but pheasants are about again that's me all packed up leave no trace right that's the end of that camp for this week guys and uh, how about this the phone has just told me it's at 15% battery it's just giving me the warning light now so I've got away with that one that'll teach me in future though always charge up your equipment before you go out yeah that was a good camp that one everything's packed up now it's all on me back that feels a hell of a lot lighter yeah that's been a good one that has that's one of the more successful uh, tarp setups I've done and I'm probably not going to do any more 3x3 three three meter tarp setups for a while so I wanted to go through those main setups like the enclosed pyramid, the tent one that I've just done, the lean-to which was a bit of a disaster but it was a good camp and I'm trying to think of the other ones I've done now that's the other one. oh and the A-frame like with a ridge line going through it so I've done those four don't think I've done any more apart from sort of poncho type setups but that's different like in terms of three by three meter type setups I've done sort of the big four that I wanted to do and practiced them and they've gone well so uh, yes yeah, so I'm gonna leave it for the tarps for a while and I'm just gonna crack on with sort of you know the new tents and sort of ultralight stuff like bivy bag things I've even got a survival <laughs> survival equipment wild camp so using like one of those silver space blanket bivy bags, one of the you know the big plastic rubble sack bivy bags and that sort of stuff. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try one of those out one night and and have a go at that, probably probably further into the forest. Um that's about it really. So that's just upcoming sort of upcoming uh wild camps me to look forward to so right I'm gonna head off home anyway cheers for watching guys I hope you like this one get in the comments let us know what you think and yeah you'll see me in the next one so cheers for watching as always see you later bye bye